Hi, my name is Jim Vashro, and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use a, uh, a voltmeter, a volt ohm meter. Um, it's a useful tool. I use it uh, in a lot of my handyman work, um, and you can actually go quite far in terms of uh, analyzing and troubleshooting um, problems in several things, including electronics, house wiring, and a number of other uh, uh, car issues and things like that. So I think it'd be good to have some basics and I'll talk about the basics with that. Um, I'm going to cover the description of the meter, um, this volt ohm meter. It's also uh, used for amps, but it's typically called a volt ohm meter. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, uh, talk about measuring voltage and we'll go through an example with that. I'll talk about measuring uh, continuity or ohms or resistance. Uh, those, those are all uh, same terms for measuring uh, whether there's resistance in the line or not, uh, whether you've got a short or an open. And uh, so that should be helpful. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about testing capacitors. I've got a uh, circuit board here that I will uh, uh, look at. And uh, we'll look for capacitor problems. And then um, we'll also uh, uh, show how to test fuses and uh, look at that. And then uh, I'll probably make a comment about transistors and uh, some of the simple tests you can do with transistors. But I'm not going to get into a, a, a more detailed transistor testing, which you can use the voltmeter or volt ohmmeter and it and can be successful in helping you indicate whether a transistor is actually functioning correctly. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into that much depth, but I'll just look for shorts, basically. So anyway, those are the topics I'll cover, and uh, hopefully we can uh, provide some insight for a better use of this uh, really versatile piece of equipment. Okay, voltmeter. so let me talk about voltmeter. Um, they come in a lot of different sizes. They come uh, with a lot of different... Uh, primarily different screens. This is a digital voltmeter. I'll turn it on in a minute and you'll see the digital indication. There's also a meter um, that also comes and uh, they all work basically the same. They come in bigger units, smaller units, much more precision units, but they all work basically the same. They're there to measure volts, ohms, and which is a measure of resistance, ohms and resistance and uh, also current. Um, I'm not going to delve on that current measurement too much today. So the meter, it's got a battery inside. Um, I'll do a quick check for uh, continuity and if the meter doesn't swing over or don't get a good indication on continuity, often it's a, it's a battery indication or a battery problem that you need to change out the battery. So, um, and one of the things I make sure and do is turn this thing off when I'm done using it uh, after every use. And uh, the reason is it just saves that battery and the battery lasts for a couple of years. Leads, um, well, all the meters come with leads. Sometimes these will have clips on the end uh, or you can slide clips on, big clips, little clips. The, and uh, you'll notice you have points, which I'll show a little bit later to probe through the uh, conformal coating on the PC boards. Um, black and red. Red's always positive. Think positive. Um, black is your common or negative. Positive, negative. So um, let's see. In this particular one, I also have uh, a transistor tester here, but I'm not going to delve into that. Um, so first off, I think what I'll do is we'll touch on uh, measuring some voltage. And the first thing you got to understand about voltage, <coughs> uh, well, other than the safety issues, and uh, certainly you want to be careful that you don't go in and play with uh, high voltage. Um, I'm going to be dealing with circuitry here that's primarily uh, 5 volts and 12 volts. But there are some caps in here that can store energy. And the energy can uh, be dissipated very quickly if through your finger, that sort of thing, and it can hurt. Um, if the voltage is much above, you know, 5 volts isn't going to really bother you, but 10 volts, 
20, 30, that sort of thing. Certainly 110 volts coming out of your wall socket. Uh, and then if you get into um, like some of the older CRTs and things, they have thousands of volts uh, that can be a power problem. So uh, you want to be very careful. And if you're dealing with circuitry, I'll just make one comment. The best thing is discharge all the caps. Um, you know, you can use a light bulb, uh, uh, actually, you know, a piece of wire. Uh, best is a resistor or something like that, a low ohm resistor, and touch it across the leads of your capacitor. Um, but if nothing else is there, just take a piece of wire, short it out, a knife or something, short those things out. And you may get an arc, you may burn the, the wire, but it's better than burning yourself. So, anyway, that's the storage devices. Um, I was back to voltage. Voltage uh, comes in two flavors direct current or DC, or alternating current or AC. Um, the batteries, typically a battery, and I'll grab one here in a minute, we'll measure voltage, is a DC, direct current. Most of the things you're interested in, if you're looking for voltages on circuit boards, is DC. Now, the circuit board has a lot of signals running around them, and those will be alternating kinds of things, They're digital signals, but, um, but primarily you're interested in making sure that, uh, at this level of troubleshooting, making sure that the power is there and the power supply that you're really looking at is DC voltage. Okay. Sorry, I got interrupted by a telephone. Um, power DC voltages. Uh, primarily, you're going to be concerning yourself with DC voltages. AC, um, alternating current, will give you uh, the kinds of power that comes out of the wall sockets. There are times when you'll have DC, AC, alternating current, in some of this uh, circuitry, but it's primarily in the input power side of things. So where your power plug comes out of your wall, that's 110 volts AC, 115, uh, and then comes into the circuitry. Then it goes into transformers and, and pretty soon it gets rectified and turned into DC. But, but those were the AC components and uh, most often you won't be dealing with that unless you're doing some electrical troubleshooting for wiring and that sort of thing in a house. Uh, and then you'll be dealing with AC. And uh, the big deal there is DC you're using lower voltages, 5 volts, 12 volts, that sort of thing, 6 volts, 12 volts like in a car. AC, you're typically talking about 115 volts, 220 sometimes, 440, and then in the bigger cases, industrial type things. So you got to be careful with that. And AC, uh, although it can be measured fairly easy, this wires, these two leads will do a super job. And, and troubleshooting and, and ringing out wall sockets. I can stick this in a socket and get an indication. You just have to realize that you've got uh, quite a bit of uh, potential for power there and, and severe burns and shock. So um, it's not something to be necessarily scared of. You just need to be aware of what you're doing there. And um, so, by the way, I'm not uh, uh, giving a complete tutorial here. So. If it comes to safety issues, please do not do this unless you feel comfortable with what you're doing. Uh, I can't be held liable for uh, misuse and uh, um, things that could cause potential safety things for you. So I'll point some of those things out, but uh, take when you take on doing some of this work, you're taking it on yourself.